Today's a big day because me and my buddy Andy are going to put the engine in the frame. We're going to prepare it. I have cleared all the tools out of the way, but only the ones I need because there's nothing worse than struggling for the tool when you're halfway with the engine in the frame, part in the frame, hanging out, blah, blah. It can get a little bit dangerous there. So we have to have everything to hand in order to get those mounts in when we need to do it. Um, the process is um quite straightforward but it can be tricky we've got the jack in the middle i went through that on one of the last videos how I, how i put the jack in the middle we're going to see if we can lift the engine through the frame from the right hand side of the bike and then place it on the wood which is on top of the jack and then slowly manipulate the engine around until we get those engine mounts lined up now i'm going to be going all over the place trying to work around the bike so please excuse me for not seeing me on the camera you might see my body but you probably won't see me talking to the camera because i'll be concentrating what i'm doing we don't want any crush fingers we don't want to damage the frame we want to try and do this as smoothly and as safely as possible so we're going to start that in a minute we'll be back later right the plan is um what we intend to do guys when I did the 1100, you can't see me, but I'll just speak up a bit. When I did the 1100, I had the engine on a trolley and I maneuvered it, maneuvered it a bit on the trolley to get it in. It was quite heavy and obviously I didn't want to damage anything. So I put rag everywhere, but because of the bike I'm working on is a very old bike. And obviously we don't want to damage the frame. I put some rag here and the object of the exercise today is me and my good friend, Andy, are going to put the engine on this plate here. And then I can jack it up, as I said earlier, when we took the engine out, to line up with these mounts. That's the plan. Bear with us. If you hear some swearing, sorry, but there it, it does happen. But we'll see how we go. We should be all right. Right, Andy. If you can grab that one there, and maybe that one there, what I want to do, if I can at this moment, so that I can get around the other side is to stand him on there. If we, if it will go in, great. Well, I just need to be careful of the, the frame. If it stands, sits on there, it's not a big deal because we've got that protecting. Are you ready, sir? There's a handle there if you want to grab the shaft. Do you see the shaft? It might be too close. Hang on, hang on. It's going to be a bit tricky there, isn't it? Do you want me to grab that end? Oh, it's okay. Hang on. Let's nope. go back a minute. Yeah, I'm all bent that way. Might lose it with the That's good. It's going to come up your end a bit. Yeah, I'm Hang on. You've got your hand out? That's right. Steady. Um, there's an engine mount, it's just, that's it, just past the engine mount. Oh, yeah, there you go. Well, the studs there, yeah, the studs lined up with it, yeah. So that needs to come out, doesn't it? Yeah. Tell you what, it's a bit rocky to rocky at the moment. Oh, it's, it's on the frame here. It's that engine mount at that side. I probably need to go around that side. Tell you what, if you set it there, I'll come around the other side. Easy. We'll see if we can work it together. Yeah, like this one. Yeah. Like this. Oh, hang on. Oh, <laughs> this one's caught on here. Okay, can you? Can you go down a little bit? Is that is it resting on the jack? Yeah. Okay, I've got the shaft. We can lift up a bit. That's the way. That's it. As long as he's on the jack. Yeah, that's on the jack there, I think. Okay, and I'm going to let the jack 
down a little bit so that I can get that one in there to line it up. I'll do this very carefully. You just see why I'm. That's right, that's okay. Those mounts line up. That could come out because they'll get in the way now. That's great. Right then. This is always a bit tricky because I've got to control it. Or does it just drop? See if we can get I think we might need to go a bit down a bit more actually because he's not level at the back. Tell you what, if we can just pick him up a little bit at this front, drag him forward a little bit. That's better, that's better. Oh, wrong one. Yep, lovely. Right, I can probably get that pin in. This is just a temporary pin to hold him in place. If not, should we get the other pin in there? side then I've got to put a clamp on there that's it I've got to put the clamp on and then we've got two stays in which will hold it so there we go folks a bit of jiggery pokery I'm just going to loose tighten these up but not really tight it's just to stable it while we line up the other mounts in fact I've got the wrong bolt in the wrong hole but it doesn't matter Good. I've got a bite on the thread so those those shafts those engine mount shafts they can't come out now it's not supporting the engine just yet it's still on the jack but it doesn't matter so much now because it's safe that's the most important thing on that point I'll be back later um, and we'll be going through the final stages of securing the engine right chaps um, I'm back much thanks to Andy to help me lift it in. Just tightening up the mounts. One here, it's a teardrop mount which goes up inside and the same on the other side. We've got this one here, one down here and obviously the one at the very front at the top. <clears throat> Just gonna tighten up, finish tightening up. Didn't film any of that because quite frankly, it's a bit tedious and boring. But we're just finishing off by tightening this one, which is a 17 mil giant bolt that goes through the frame and we'll torque these down later so now I think I can probably let the jack out the way actually just going to check a couple of things just 
need to tighten this one. I'm going to check them now. That one's tight. Last one to check is the very front one, the upper one of the two. This is all coming together very well now. I'm very pleased with the way that's gone. Right, this is the following video um, from when we put the engine in. Um, you guys probably can't see a lot of that. I need to get to grips more with this GoPro. It doesn't seem to give me what I want at the moment, but it's not the camera, it's probably me. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go round the engine and show you the mounts. Uh, because we didn't put them in detail on the last video. So this is the top mount here. There's a spacer here. The bolt mount, whatever you call it shaft once it goes right way through there's a spacer here the long one which you can just see there this black one is on the left hand side as you sit on the bike there's also one down here if you can see that in there um, and there's also one here now this comes off as a triangle be careful with these because if you strip the thread inside the frame here and here you got a bit of a problem and there's one also here and again this triangle comes off now these are unique to this side of the bike they're not on the other side it's all fixed on the other side apart from the one at the bottom which is similar to this but it's a lug welded onto the frame I'll go around and show you so that's what we were trying to line up yesterday <coughs> On this side, the left hand side, there's that long spacer I was telling you about. And there's the bottom mount which comes out roughly the same place on the other side. That is the shaft that goes through there. This is the lug and this is the bolt that goes through. And on the underneath you've got the butterfly, it look like a pear drop. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to see if I can turn you upside down so you can see it maybe. don't know whether it will come out. Maybe not. Don't know whether that you can see that pair drop there but that's on the underside of the bike and then of course you've got the welded bracket here which the shaft goes through all the shafts go through from this side going that way um, where the shafts are mounted and that's basically it one thing i didn't say when i did this the other day when i put the swinging arm in on the last video i should have mentioned that all the internals where the bushes and the sleeves reside, that was all greased up manually. Then I pumped a load of grease in through that grease nipple there, which I mentioned during that video. So it should give it a really smooth action, and it does. I mean, obviously I can't move it now because we got we got the shock absorbers on, but it does give it a really good smooth action, and that's that. So now, where do we go from here? Well, <clears throat> if we look here. The head's got to be put on. Um, I will clean all the balls. I'm going to blow them out uh, before I put the head on. I'm going to prep all this, clean it all off with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. Make sure everything's tickety-boo. And then, with a bit of luck, when all that's done, we can put the head on. So that's where we are at the moment. It's got new rings on as well, this engine new piston rings which will make a big difference i believe because if you go back a couple of videos um i checked the gaps and it was just right on the limits so it's just pointless using the same rings right so that's where we are so it is slowly coming together it's harder to get that engine in believe it or not even though this is a 900 um than the 1100 now the 1100 is a shaft drive and you get a lot more room around here, a lot more room. 
and putting that engine in i know it's heavier but it was easier because you've got that that extra bit of room here as you saw in the previous video when andy and i put this engine in we i wouldn't say we struggled but you had to got it you have to get it in exactly the right position to get it to line up with the mounts and then when you've got it lined up and it's on the jack then you can put those bolts nuts brackets uh, into place so that it holds it on a temporary basis that jack now is not doing anything really it can come away um don't think there's a lot more i can say um i'm going to work now on the wheel because i want to get that wheel back in i want to put the sprocket the new sprocket and chain kit on there so all this is done as you can see it's a pretty beefy chain o-ring chain which is what you'd expect in this day and age um so i'm going to take you over to the wheel let's have a look at the wheel Now the last video I'd done, there's something I want to mention here, the last video I'd done, I wasn't very happy because I noticed when I played it back after it had been published, let me turn you around a little bit, after it had been published, <clears throat> I noticed that it was um, a bit blotchy and I don't know whether that was because I only used a smaller card and it wasn't, um, a, is it scan disc? I can't remember the name of the card now but it's a pretty powerful card that you put in these GoPros. And I used a 60, was it 64 gigabyte card, and it wasn't um, a professional card, it was a lot lower. And I think that's what may have been the problem. So this card, sorry, this, this camera now, the GoPro, is now filming with a 128 professional card in, minute micro SD card. I'm hoping it's going to come out better. But time will tell when I play it all back. It is annoying because, of course... When you're actually shooting, you don't know that it's doing that. You can only find out when you play the, vid the footage back and then you see for yourself that it's not quite right or it's not as good as it could be. But we'll see how we go. Um, I'm going to take you off this, this stick, this holder. I think vloggers use this, but it still comes in handy. Um, I'm going to take you off the stick and then I'm going to put you on the tripod and we're going to bring the wheel up on the bench and we're going to go through the wheel and the bearings. Be right back. Right, folks, welcome back. Um, this is the rear wheel off the Z1. Um, not too sure about the bearings. I went through it on the last video, and I think I mentioned some of these spokes. Listen to this. They are not tight. In fact, some of them are very loose, I reckon. So I'm going to see what I can do there. But one of the main things of sorting this wheel out was this. Listen. That's the bearings. So I think it's fair to say, even if you lift it up off the base of the vise and try and move it, you can still get that play. I'm pretty sure it's fair to say that we need to change those bearings. So now we need to get those bearings out. But before I do that, I'm just going to see what is going to what is possible with these spokes. I'm going to see if I can set up maybe a metal table here with a dial gauge somewhere along the along the line so I can set set the the trueness of the wheel because I don't think it's very true. <clears throat> let's see let's have a look I need to have a little think about this I'll be back in a minute right guys I'm back um, I've got this wheel in the bench and I've got a dial gauge set up here it's a bit tricky and it's not as accurate as what I'd like but it's the best I can do and some of these spokes I noticed were bent but I don't know whether that's to do with the fact that they're loose or they were somebody before I had the bike has pulled away really harshly and shall we say gone a bit mad with the torque or the power going to the back wheel i've not seen this before so it's a bit new to me but they're bending in the opposite way that you'd expect if that was the case so i'm not sure but i've gone around with a screwdriver i've tightened a few up where is my screwdriver yeah 
I've tightened a few of these up with my little adjustable here and I'm tapping them. And they all seem okay. Well, they do now because I've gone through them. But what I wanted to be careful is not pulling the wheel out of true, as in this way. So what I've done, I've kept this gauge on there and I've worked from that side, checking. We are a little bit out, but I believe that is in, it's within the limits. I'm pretty sure it's within the limits. But I also think there may be a flat on this rim. Now, when I say a flat, I don't mean a big dent in the sense that it's really buckled, but maybe it's gone over a bump in the past. I really don't know. But the rest of the wheel is pretty damn accurate. But there's the spot here. Now, it could be where someone's clouted the wheel when the wheel was changed. Sorry, when the tire was changed. Difficult to say. Plus, there's a few bumps on the rim, which I think is just rusty surface. But we need to obviously try and take that out with something or another, maybe some wire wall. I think it may happen in time that these wheels need to be re-chromed. But it's pretty, pretty accurate now. So let's take the, the gauge away. Let's spin the wheel and see if we can see anything by eye. Looks pretty good. Looking through the spokes, I can see it's a little, there is a spot where it does quiver a bit, but the wheel's not too bad. But I'm not happy with this tire. I will use it, but as soon as this tire goes down to the legal limit, this tire is coming off. Right, that's where we are for the time being. So now I need to take the bearings out. So let's have a look at that. Right, I've got the wheel on the bench. Um, I've got my drift here, guys. And the trick is to use this narrow end. And I tap a couple of taps when I find the bearing at 12 o'clock. There. And a couple of taps on the other side. Well, I did tap a bit before I put the camera on. So now that bearing should have popped out. Let's see what we got. And it has. And there's the bearing. Now this is the spacer between them, which separates them and so you can get in there, so they don't go in too far. And so you can get in there and tap the bearings out. This is slightly bigger so that you can get the drift in to tap the inside race of the bearing. <clears throat> Just wipe your hands a minute. As you can see, we've got a lot of crap on that bench, which I didn't want to have, but there you go. Not good to breathe that in. So now I can tap the other one out. <clears throat> We can use a block of wood for this one, I believe. There he goes. Careful not to hit that. There's the other bearing, packed with grease, but very, oh, that one's really loose. Yeah, that one is really loose. I 
that's the real one. I think it's the real way to test them to see how much play is in the race when they're dry. Don't spin them when they're dry, they used to say. <clears throat> Natural fact, <laughs> it's probably not a good idea to do that anyway. But you see it on YouTube where guys are spinning them dry with the airline and letting them go racing across the floor. I don't recommend it. Right, so that needs to be cleaned up. Cleaned up, greased, and we'll tap the new bearings in. So that's the old ones. So we're looking for a new set. I hope they're shielded. Yes. Now on the brake drum side, you can't tap them in too far because there's a lip. But we mustn't forget this spacer. Where's it gone? This spacer. Gonna put a little bit of grease around that to make it easier. Just a smidge. Few taps to get it started on the wood. Just to make sure he's home and seated well. And he is. That's that one in. So now we'll turn over, put some more muck on the bench. Need to get all that crud out. Old grease. Don't really want that. If I go quiet, don't worry, it's just I'm focusing on what I'm doing. nice and clean right before I put this bearing in I need to check to see which way this came out so I'm gonna look at the manual on that one I want to have this right Just have a quick look. I don't think it makes much difference, but we will check it. Let's have a look. Right guys, I'm back again. Let me just make sure that's a bit more secure. That's better. Now we're ready for this one. It's been greased up. I'm just gonna place him in there. Get me a bit of wood. 
Where will that be gone? There it is. Wonder if this one home. There we go. I don't want to tap the inner race if I can possibly help it. And don't hit your fingers. <laughs> That one needs to go down a lot further. What I've done, I use this socket. To tap it on out to race. Once I got past this point here, this surface. right right guys that's it for now i'm going to wrap it up uh, thanks for viewing um please do click the button below do hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already it's really nice to get those subscriptions because obviously it helps the channel it's free you don't pay for it next time i'm going to be doing more work on the z1 and i hope that you can come and join me in the meantime gary at gary's practical workshop saying bye for now see you later mm -hmm.